Bless the Lord. Let's pray. And let's always honor God's word. Bless the Lord. Amen. Father, we do give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for life itself. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. But Lord, most of all, we thank you for Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the one who purchased our salvation, the one who poured out his life unto death that he might rise from the dead and sit at the right hand of the Father and pour out his spirit upon us. So, Master, be glorified. Lord, I pray that this day we might continue to grow in grace and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. So, Father, bless as only you can. Be glorified this day in your church, not just here, Lord, everywhere that calls upon your name, everywhere you, where your word is declared, pray that you might meet them. Lord, I pray that you grant revival in this land, that it be turning to you, that this nation would indeed be a nation under God. So, Lord, do what only you can do. Save us all. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless the Lord. Please be seated. Now, what I want to talk about today is joy, but I also want to talk about this. Accountability. Are you accountable? You know, that, uh, again, if you have a job and you don't show up, you might get fired if you do that a few times. You're to be accountable. What does it mean you, you call? You let them know you can't make it. You're going to be late or you're sick and can't get there. And you, you, that's called accountability. I pray that, if, you know, if, if your men are out somewhere and you, you told your wife you'll be home at 4 o'clock and you, you see you're not going to get home till 5 o'clock, that you're accountable when you call and say, honey, I want not to get permission for information. You know, uh, if, she wants, if she's trying to get supper ready for 4 and you're going to eat it at 5, it's going to be cold. And if you're not accountable, you're probably also a complainer. And you'll complain about the cold supper. Not saying that it's not your fault, but bless the Lord. But accountability is a good thing. We should be accountable. We should give account of ourselves. We're to live in the light. We don't hide things. You know, uh, we have a public life and we have a private life. But the private life is the light is in that privacy. Now, what I mean by that, you have problems in your family. Don't air your dirty laundry to the world. It's not their business. You, you take care of it. You get it taken care of. I hope you have a pastor to go to, a church, or somebody you can go and sit down and get some counseling. And you put it in that light and get it resolved, and it's good. Uh, so, you know, what causes so many problems is gossip, talk, telling things, half-truths that you know. How many of you know, even when you watch the news, you're usually getting half-truths? Because it's more exciting, it's more wow when it's a half. But tell the whole rest of the story. And there, there's always two sides to the story. You know, I, I do do. I've done a ton of counseling, and and I, I've even told uh, Elder Mike, Pastor Gary, we're talking. I said, you know, when you counsel, if you hear, if you listen to, like, if a husband and wife are having problems, you listen to the husband. It's like, boy, that wife. I don't know where you found her at. Then if you listen to the wife, you wonder where would you find that husband. You know, both have a legitimate point. But the answer is never, and I, I say this a lot, and I don't know who gets it and who don't. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil produces death. In other words, I can judge you, and you can judge me, and we can argue about who's right, and it's not going to heal the relationship. It's going to drive it further apart. But if you go to the tree of life, that is obey Jesus, obey the word of God, get the right spirit, he fixes it. He'll take care of you, right, wrong. He'll take care of you. The, the tree of life is to hear God's word, to do it God's way, to do your part. I can't make my wife do her part. I can only do my part. And she can't make me do my part. She can only do her part. But when you do that, it works. And as a church, my part is to teach you the word of God. My part is also to be an example and live the word of God, which I fear not to do that. But your part is to go along with the program. You're, you're to hear the word of God and do it. You don't just do it here. When you walk out the door, when you go home, you're to apply it to your life. If you don't do it, it won't work for you. This thing isn't just like uh, that we wave a magic wand and go poof, and you go home and everything is just wonderful. You have to apply what you're taught here in your home. You know, you can bring your children. You can send them downstairs to, to children's church, and they can sing songs and play games and memorize scriptures. But if you go home and there's tension in your home, and you're still fighting, and you're still feuding, and you still got an attitude, and you're still judging each other, and you think your children are going to turn out wonderful without an attitude and just be these great citizens, good luck. I got, got a bridge or some old carpet I want to sell you. It's just, it doesn't work that way. You have to live this. You know, it, it has to be your life. In fact, 
there's a scripture that's probably not preached on very often. And it says this, it was in uh, 1 Corinthians, I believe we talked about it yesterday. It says, if anyone doesn't love Jesus, let him be accursed. Pretty tough scripture. Let him be accursed because you are. Without Christ, there is no salvation. And how can you not love him who first loved you? How can you not love him who purchased your salvation, who died for you? In fact, at the men's meeting, we shared this and we were talking about this and because they've been challenging men. You know, man up. What do I mean man up? Do things because it's right to do, not because you necessarily feel like doing it. You know, if you're ruled by your feelings, you're going to have a, 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 a disastrous life. But if you do what's right, that's called righteousness. You know, I, I believe... I don't know how many of you, but this morning, if you woke up, some of you probably didn't even feel like getting out of bed. Some of you got aches and pains and sores. Some of us are old enough and everything don't work just right. But why do you go to church? It's right to do. You get up and you go to church. I mean, you you know, you, you might have had some bad news. Uh, I know Brother Buck did a funeral thing the, the, the other day. And, and after that, you come to church and you're going to praise the Lord. You praise the Lord because he's worthy of praise, not because you feel like it. Now, here's the beauty. When you do right, the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The peace that passes understanding comes upon you. You're aware of the presence of the Lord. You just feel good. Your spirit rejoices. Your spirit can rejoice even though you have an ache or pain in your leg or your knee. Or you can rejoice in the Lord. And we're to serve the Lord with gladness, with joy. You know, Scripture is going to use today. You know, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, Israel perished because they didn't serve the Lord with joy. You know, if, if church is a drudgery to you, then God's a drudgery to you. You know, Scripture says it very clearly. If you say you love God who you haven't seen and don't love your brother who you have seen, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. So if you say you're in fellowship with God, but there's no kindred spirit with the saints, that the Holy Spirit don't bear witness and you're not connected to them, you're not connected to God. You think you are. You're probably self-righteous and judging everybody. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He says, love one another. Make an effort to do that. He says, make other people's needs more important than your own. Make sure you do that. Be aware of what's going on, who needs help. It's really easy to sit back and criticize. Well, you know, they should be doing this or they should be doing that. Or How about jump in and give them a hand, help, serve, do it with joy. We have uh, some people in this church that are servants. In fact, uh, I've been challenged to, I don't know if challenge is the right word, but uh, a certain sister told me, Pastor, when you have something that needs done in this church, tell me. I like to do it. I want to do it. And I feel like I'm being left out if you don't. Hey, that, that's one. So we're moving in the right direction. Now, we have a number of volunteers. Our praise band is volunteers. Our, where's John Andrew? Our, our man at the door is volunteer. We just... People volunteer and do a lot of things, and I'm blessed by that. But, Mike, don't go through life full of drudgery. Is there is there sad stuff out there? What's going on in this country? And that's pretty sad. I mean, it's, you know, I love America, you know. But the kingdom is slipping away from America, and chaos is what's left. What's going on is people who don't know our history accurately and don't know that Christians founded this nation. It's not about white privilege. It's about Christian privilege. You know, God was honored in the birth of this nation. And God has been honored for a lot of years. But now it's going away, and the blessing is going to go away. So pray that there's revival in land. Pray that the church stands up and that we are the light to the world. You know, we should have what the world can't have because they don't have the tools that we have, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So in our, I would pray that in our families there's unity and love. I pray that our children are behaved and well-behaved and they do good when they're in school, when they're out, that people see a difference. Come on, when the Israelites were in Egypt, you know, and the plagues came on Egypt, when it was darkness in Egypt, it was still light in Israel. Come on, it's our, all those things happen for us to understand the working as God. If you honor God and you keep his commandments and you walk by faith, he'll bless you. He'll also test you, but that's good. When he tests you, you get more grace, and it's a statement of God's hand in your life. So understand that the testing of the Lord is good. The King David said, test me, O Lord, and see my heart. 
you know, you don't even know what you'll do until you put in a situation. You know, I've read that, like in India, they'd take a martyr's oath. I've read the martyr's oath. And I passed you, I read the martyr's oath there. And people said, boy, you ought to take a martyr's oath. I don't want to take a martyr's oath. What if I have to do that? I don't know that I'd die for Jesus. I like to think I would. I like to think I would. If you ask me, would you die for Jesus? I sure hope so. But I don't know. I've never been brought where they nail you down and say, denounce Jesus or we're going to kill your family. I've never been in that situation. I don't think I'd go, well, go ahead, kill my family or cut my, go ahead, cut my head off. I've never been there. I don't know that. I learn me when God tests me and puts me in a situation and I end up doing right. If you used to steal when you find yourself in a position where that in the past you, you would have just went and nobody would know it. And God lets you, in, in that situation, boy, your hand's going, because you used to steal. It was pretty natural and easy. In fact, you felt good when you get away with something. There's pleasure in sin for a season. Like, you think, man, I'm one up on everybody. You're not. You're really going down. But, but if you're there and you're tempted to steal and you go, ah, no, no, no. God have mercy on me. And you walk away, you pass the test. God says, that's my servant. That's my man. He manned up. He did what he's supposed to do, and I'm going to bless him. He's going to walk away, and he's going to start feeling good. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon him. Probably even get some goosebumps because he feels good. You know, the, to, be, to be glad in your heart because God has graced you. He's given you his spirit. It's pretty incredible. But bless the Lord. Let me read some scriptures to you. You know, And, and before I do, I, I got, want to qualify this. You know the scriptures are the word of God. Now, is that the entire word of God? No, that you can get a prophetic word that might, apply to you specifically, but it's never going to contradict this word. The Holy, This is Holy Spirit inspired. Men wrote it by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And again, reminder, the Bible says, test the Spirit, see if they be of God or not. If somebody's leading you or teaching you and guiding you and they tell you to do things contrary to the book, say, sorry, no can do. And I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's a pastor or a priest, a preacher or a priest or an evangelist. I don't care who it is. If it's your best friend and he's telling you, hey, you don't have to do that. Yes, you do. Don't listen to that. And what you'll find out, you're, you know, as, as, a, as a Christian and as a church, we have the opportunity to prove that the word of God is true by doing it. And when you do the word of God, the, the fruit of that comes. You know, if you, walk, if you walk in the spirit, you will bear the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Isn't that what we're seeking your whole life? God's going to hand it to you, and then he's going to bless your life. So anyhow, listen, in John 8, 51, Jesus said this. He says, truly, 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 I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. Now, you, you know, there's people who have kept his word and they died. The spirit of death will never be on you. You can pass from this life to that life. Your body can perish, but there's going to be a resurrection. But there's no death in you. We abide in life. We should be full of life. We should enjoy life. We should make the most out of life. We should glorify God with our life. And I don't abide in death. What do I mean abide in death? I'm not living in sin. I'm not living in condemnation. I'm not living in a spirit of fear. I'm not living, I'm full of hate and discontentment. I'm not going around gossiping and complaining. You, you're abiding in death when you do those things. If you violate the commandments, you're abiding in death. You might think you're alive because you're breathing, but you're abiding in death. But what are we? Prove yourself doers of the word and not merely hearers who delude themselves. Don't fool yourself. If you're sitting here and say, well, I'm a Christian, I go to church, but you don't live the word of God and you don't do, pra, apply what you're taught to your, to your life, you're fooling yourself. You delude yourself. And listen to this. Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough? What are we talking about? We start compromising the word. Part of what's wrong with America, we compromise the word. Who, who does that? Us pastors? Come on, there, I, there's pastors who won't preach certain things because they might get fired. Or somebody in the congregation won't like it and will get criticized by them. It's our job to teach you the truth and to challenge you to walk in the truth. 
And it's also a challenge to us. Any preacher who doesn't live his own preaching shouldn't be preaching. You know, I'm my best audience. I've already heard this sermon a whole lot of times before I preach it to you. I already know these scriptures. So it's say, clean out the old leaven that you may be a new lump, just as you were in fact unleavened. For Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. What's it mean unleavened? Get rid of your arrogance. Get rid of that know-it-all attitude. Get rid of that posture better than somebody else. I'm glad I'm not like him. I'm like, but by the grace of God, there go I. You know, Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God. What do you mean? He was who he was. And we're to, we're to be humble. We're not to be leavened. Leaven is you're pumped up. You think you're something. You think you're special. And you know what will do that to you? Knowledge. You know, if you always study the Bible and read books of theology and all these kind of books, but you never apply it to your life, you're going to get arrogant. Knowledge puffs you up. Because you think you know something. Well, you do know something, but doesn't mean you know the Lord. Knowing Jesus makes you humble. It makes you desire to do right and to love him. Again, if anyone doesn't love Jesus, let him be accursed. For everyone who does evil hates the light. You know this anarchy that's going on now in this country is, I mean, They'll tear, they, don't, they don't want Jesus. They don't want the Bible. They don't want Christianity. They're walking in darkness, and you watch what comes out of that. If that succeeds, it'll abide. It'll 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 self destruct. If you don't keep those nations, only are blessed whose God is the Lord. What's that mean? The nations who live by the commandments, who have laws that are in accord with the Scriptures, prosper. Ones who don't, it's chaos and it's self-destructing. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. And those principles that they're after and what they're trying to do, it's not going to work because God's not in it. The only thing that works is when God puts his hand in it and he always honors his word. He puts his word even above his name. He, God keeps his word. He looks for his word to perform. I mean, you walk by faith and do what God's supposed to do. He'll do what he's supposed to do. You know, again, and he'll do it in his time, which is perfect. But he who practices the truth comes to the light. Now listen to this. That his deeds may be manifested as having been wrought in God. What does it mean comes to the light? You expose what you do. You give testimony. You're accountable. You know, uh, I always know if you have a good reason to miss church. Because every time you have a good reason to miss church, you know, where it's, you say it's the Lord to miss church, I get a phone call. Hey, pastor, you know, Somebody uh, died and I got, got sick. I, I got to go to a funeral. For, there's a reason, and you put it in the light. And I go, amen, go, be blessed. But when I don't get a call, it's like I'm missing church, but I'm going to the Steeler game. Or I, I'm going to sleep in today, or I wanna, I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to go ride my bicycle. Whatever you're going to do, if you don't tell, it's probably not a good enough reason. If you put it in the light, it says, he who practices the truth comes to light. That's what we do, that his deeds may be manifest as having wrought in God. And all things become visible when they're exposed to the light, for everything that becomes visible is light. We show ourselves. We, we you know, in fact, to get, sa you know, to get saved, to come, come to the Lord, you know, usually you go to an altar or you go to somebody and you confess your sins and say, I need help. And you ask Jesus to come into your life. And you go get in the waters of baptism. And you get in the waters of baptism. You publicly profess Jesus. You come to the light. You declare yourself to be in the light and watch what God does for you. All things become visible when they're exposed to the light. For everything that becomes visible is light. We're to walk in the light. Our, our life is to be an open book. Now, you know, I really speak that in regard to God and his word. You know, again, there's things that uh, if you have a feud in your house, you need to get it resolved. You might need to bring it to the light. And I mean, go get some counsel. But you don't need to put it on Facebook or tweet it out. Church, sometimes, you know, those, those you know, I got a cell phone that I can use. I, you know, people complain about a cell phone because they cost $700. Those things are worth $7,000. My God, you can, do you realize everything's at your hand? Anything you want to know is there. You get lost, it tells you how to find your way home. You don't have to remember your phone number. Hey, Siri, call Pinky. You know, you know it's just, 
it's incredible. Uh, uh, Siri, what's John 3.16 say? John 3.16 says, I'm going to quote John 3.16 to you. For God so loved the world. I mean, it's, it, it, it's incredible what's done. And more and more things you've done. You, you now, if you've got sugar, you put a thing on your thing and you look at your phone, it tells you if your sugar is okay, if your blood pressure is going up. I mean, there's no end to this thing, you know. You know, I remember years ago, I was at a full gospel men's convention and people were, this couple were talking about when Jesus comes, it says every eye will see him. And I'm going back, this is like 30, 40 years ago. And man, they're trying to analyze how they could do it. And he goes, you know, if, if he would spin around the world as fast, then everybody would see. I mean, they were come, trying to come up with how, because we cannot conceive how every eye could see him if he comes. Now, I don't know if this is the answer, but <gasps> look what's happening. He's at the Eastern Gate. It's very conceivable that everybody didn't have a cell phone. It'll show it. I mean, I don't know if that is the answer, but now we can see that it can happen where 20 years ago we couldn't have no clue of how it could happen. So, and I don't know if that's how he's going to do it, but God got it figured out. He's pretty good at what he does. Look at the creation. You know, and I pray since you come to know the Lord, creation just looks all different to you and everything declares the glory of God, everything. You know, you look at a tree and every leaf is different. And every tree has its own individual characteristics. I mean, it's just the same with people. You know, you know, an oak tree don't try to be a pine tree. And if you're a Christian, God made you. Don't try to be somebody else. Just be who you are and be who you are best for God. But again, it goes on in Isaiah 49, 9, says this. Say to those who are bound. What do you mean bound in your sin? Go forth to those who are in darkness. What do you say? Show yourself. What's that? What do we say to people? Repent. People come to you and go, you know, I did this, I did, I shouldn't have did it. You say, repent, ask Jesus to forgive you. Put that sin in the light and get it taken care of. Get it cast in a sea of forgetfulness, never to be charged against you again. And it says, let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. We should, by example, I pray you learn things by example. You know, somebody does something nice for you, you go, hmm, boy, imitate that behavior. Always imitate good behavior, don't imitate bad behavior. But it also says here, not forsaking our own assembling together. You know, I've heard people say this all my whole life. Uh, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. But if you're a Christian, you go to church. Why would you not want to fellowship with the body of Christ, who is the manifestation of Christ on earth, is the church? So not forsaking our own assembly, assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another all the more as you see the day drawing near. We're to go to church. The scriptures are pretty strong because the next verse says, if we go on sinning willfully, right after the verse says, if we go on sinning willfully, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. So go to church, do the word, do all of it. Don't have a little leaven. It leavens the whole lump. Do the word of God. All that God shows you, walk in, do it. And his grace is sufficient for you to do that. When Israel didn't walk in the law of God, you know, they had the law given by Moses. The commandments came, you know, he brought them down from the mountain on the tablets. And the Jews never really did it all. They did part of it. Everybody does part of it. I'm on the worst person, you know, there's something he keeps that's good. But it's not good enough. What happened when the Jews didn't keep the commandments? He said, so all the curses shall come upon you and pursue you and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the Lord. Hmm. Your God, by keeping his commandments and his statutes, which he commanded you. Again, the Ten Commandments, have them on a the wall over there. It's called the perfect law of liberty. And we grew up in a country where that was the standard of morality. It didn't even have to be a Christian. That was the standard you live by. You know, it goes on, it says, And they shall be a sign and a wonder to you and your descendants forever. What? The curses. When things fall apart. Come on, we, we've watched in, in, in our history. In fact, I've been studying history, and there's things when I was younger that were going on in a world that I was oblivious to. In communist Russia, my God, the Orthodox Church was persecuted and shut down, and people were murdered, and the bishops were killed, and they shut churches down. I mean, there was, uh, with, and, and I lived with, I remember Makita Khrushchev. I remember him banging his table, was going to destroy America. I remember that stuff, but. I was too busy just being a young guy doing what I do, and it didn't, didn't affect us. But it, it was anti-Christian. Communism is very anti-Christian. 
the, the government becomes your God. And again, some of we go, government like it's a magic word. It's a group of people. Not necessarily smarter than you. In fact, sometimes dumber than you. But it's a group of people who you're turning your everything over to and say, now bless me. And the way you, what you do is turn your life over to God, put, it, put your life in his hands, and he'll take care of you. He will prosper you. He'll make things work for good. He does that. But when we're cursed and the nation falls apart, just like we watch in Venezuela, Venezuela was a very prosperous country. And they became socialist, communist. I don't know if they're communist, but for sure, socialism took over. Well, what happened? The new God, the government, can't bless the people. All they can do is take and redistribute wealth until you run out of other people's money. That's what socialism is. As long as I have somebody's money to give away, I'm, I'm a hero. Oh, I'm taking care of the poor. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And then when I spend all their money, now what? Now we're all poor. Then I start taking from the, the ones who were needy are now the prosperous ones. So we, they're not really prosperous. They're just the only ones that have a little something that I gave them. You take it back. It doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And it says, and they shall be a sign and a wonder on you and your descendants forever because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and a glad heart for the abundance of all things. We look at Venezuela and go, what happened? That's what happened. You don't throw God out. God blesses you. You honor God. You keep the commandments and watch what God does for you. But listen, but not only did they not keep the commandments, they didn't serve the Lord their God with joy and a glad heart. As a Christian, you should have a glad heart. What do I mean a glad heart? You know that you're approved of God because of Jesus Christ. You know you have a relationship with God. That ought to make you, you're a child to God. Do you realize that? If that doesn't make you glad, what will? You know, if you die today, you're going to heaven. That should make you glad. And now, if you don't know that, are you living in sin? Because you should know that. And you should know that not because the pastor is telling you that, because you know in here you love Jesus and that he touched you and he's saving you and his grace is upon your life. Now, I pray that this next scripture here that Jeremiah quotes, Jeremiah 15, 16 says, Thy words were found and I ate them. I pray that you hear this word, that if you take notes, you, you know, what, what's sad is I'll come here and clean up and a lot of you take good notes and they never leave the sanctuary. You can come here next week and read them again. I don't know what you do, but I would pray you go home and have some discussion about it or you have a little conversation, a little dialogue. You check over, check over your notes, read your notes to each other. What'd you write down today? Oh, I got this. What'd you hear? I got that. You're solidifying it in your house. You got to do that. It's, it's, good. it's good to take notes, but it's better to take them home. Some of your children, I, I look at some of the notes of your children. You got to read your children's notes. Some of them are good, and you're going to give your child a hug and say, hey, man, they're, they're getting somewhere. And some of them, there's nothing to do with church in their notes. They're just pictures. And, but if you don't look, you don't know. Be a good parent. Know what your children are doing. And if your ch children are teenagers, search their room. <gasps> They're entitled to their privacy, not until they pay for their own room. But as long as they're in your house, and it's your room, and you're the authority in that house, check it out. And if you got boys, probably look between the mattresses. Some of you know why. That's where you hit them. Before they knew the Lord. Some of you know absolutely what I'm talking about. It's your responsibility to know the condition. As a pastor, I'm supposed to know the condition of the flock. As a parent, you're supposed to know the condition of your flock, which is your, your children, your family. You're, you don't know what's going on. You're to keep an eye on them. That's your responsibility. And if they say, you can't tell me that. Yes, you, yes, you can. I remember Pastor Gary's story about his, his dad. He did something. He was water skiing and put the thing over his neck. His dad told him not to do that. His dad says, come here. I'm going to spank you. He says, you can't spank me. I'm 18. Boy, was he wrong. His dad was a military sergeant. He got spanked. Found out 18 don't matter to dads. Doesn't matter to God either. Bless the Lord. But the words were found and I ate them. And thy words, listen to this, 
and thy words became for me a joy and a delight to my heart. Is that, in, in, when you're sick, what's in you? What's in your heart? When you, yeah, I'll tell you what's in my, in my when, I don't, when I'm sick, I'm getting the flu or a cold or a cough or whatever, what's in my heart is, I am the Lord that healeth thee. What's, what's that do for me? I'm going to get healed. I'm going to be all right. Not, why didn't you heal me? That's what, that's my, I hope in his word. Put, put my, I stake my life on his word. If things aren't going right, God works all things for good for those who love God and called according to his purpose. I expect it to work. I don't know how it's going to work out, but I expect that. Do, do, you, do you put this word in your heart? Is it, is, it, is it the program for your computer? You know, are you, what are you, are you on Microsoft? I mean, what are, you, what are you running on? I pray that you've reprogrammed your thinking and your mind, and it's the word of God that this is the way you think and how you draw your conclusions. You know, I pray that there's something going on in your life and you're losing your patience that the, in, your, in your heart that goes, love is patient. You know, it's like a gentle slap. You know, love is patient. Oh, I'm getting in the way of God. Why? Because I'm not being patient. We live the word. We, word trust the word of God. You know, I, I pray in your, in your spirit is, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. And, and that you're, not only you say that, that that's you. Yeah, thank God David said it first, King David, but I'm saying it now, and guess what I'm saying? Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is with me. Bless his holy name. And forget none of his benefits, man. I don't forget his benefits. He heals all your diseases. He forget, redeems your life from the pit. Forgives your sins. My, what a God we serve. At the end of the whole thing, I pray, I pray you go, I feel good in my spirit. Just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. I pray that this thing is... I pray there's no foreign words in there, no junk. Some of you keep junk. You, know, you take it with you. You heard a lie someplace and you bought into it. You know, I, you know, people say, well, you know, scientifically, it's impossible for God to create the earth in seven days. Uh, scientifically, uh, you're probably right, but honestly, the God I serve could do it in 10 minutes. Why do I know that? He said so. Why do I believe that? Because everything else I've believed that I applied to my life works. It's, 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 there's the witness of the truth in your life that, that it works. If it's not working, it's never God. You know, you can be skepticism, you can be negative, and you can say, well, I don't believe that. Okay, you're going to get the fruit of what you believe and what you don't believe. And I, I pray as, as a believer and as a church that you are by your life, proving that the word of God is true because it's evident. For the words were found and I ate them, and thy words became to me a joy and a delight to my heart. For I have been called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. You know, you give your heart to the Lord. Once you're filled with the Holy Spirit or you're seeking God, you're going to get driven to read this book. And I pray if you go to a church, you go to church that preaches this book and tells you how to apply it to your life and helps you walk with God. But my, when you, re you know, if you don't know the Lord, if you're an atheist, if you're an agnostic or whatever, and you read this book, it, it, it's contradictory. It doesn't make sense to you. It seems you don't even understand it. Once you read, once you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you start reading the book, every bit of it makes sense. It all falls into line. It all connects the, the old with the new and the, the prophets with the law and the and grace, it all it all fits together by the Holy Spirit. It's one word, it's the word of God. And, it, and as you read it, I pray there's things that just jump off the page and stir your, your heart as you read it. You know, I, I was told as a baby Christian, you know, when something jumps out at you, underline it. My first Bible, which I still have, that I read cover to cover, there it's it, it should be like red letter because it's all underlined. Now I use the red pen too. It's just underlined. I mean, chapter upon chapter, you'd read this and like, wow, just that's the God we serve. For to the person who is good in his sight, that's those who honor his word and honor his son, he has given what? Wisdom and knowledge and joy. Hmm. 
while to the sinner he is given the task of gathering and collecting so that he might give to the one who is good in God's sight. If you're a sinner, he's going to take it off you, and if you're a believer, he's going to give it to you. He's going to bless you. But what's he give you? Wisdom, knowledge, and joy. Got a problem with that? Thou hast loved righteousness, speaking of the Lord, and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of joy above thy fellows. You know, Jesus said that the joy that's in me might be in you. I come that your joy would be full. So if you believe you're a good, mature Christian, you're going along, and you don't have joy, you need to step it up. Are you still grumbling, complaining, or it's not going your way? It's always going God's way. And you can sit there and be grumpy. And you know what you're saying? God, I don't agree with you. You really don't know what you're doing because I should be blessed by now. I should be prosperous. I should have a mansion on a hill, and I should, and I should. But you don't. You know when you will have it? When God sees fit. And what holds you back is you're grumbling, complaining, murmuring, judging God that he don't know what he's doing, calling him to account. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones, and shout for joy, all of you who are upright of heart. What's upright of heart? You know, here lately, if you've been reading your devotional, we're on the book of Job. Well, I see two or three of you are reading the Bible. Yeah, book of Job. I'm glad you're reading your devotional. But Job, you know, his wife said to him, and I, and I repeat this often, but it's such a powerful thing. His wife said to him, curse God and die. I mean, Job was covered with boils, lost everything. All his sheep, all his ox, his children, his, everything, everything but his wife. And she's standing there, why don't you curse God and die? And he said to her, here he is, this guy is miserable. He's in sackcloth and ashes. You speak like a foolish woman, says to his wife. He's ministering to her, believe it or not, and said, we should accept the blessings of God and not the adversities. Though he slay me, still I'll serve him. In the midst of all the misery he was going through, he says, I will see God in my flesh. I know my Redeemer lives. He never let go of the faith. He always trusted God. He didn't understand. He didn't understand why that was going on in his life. Why? He, he, was, total, he was unaware of any sin in his life. And I pray everybody sitting in this room is not aware of any sin in your life. Not because you're naive, because there isn't any. At least willful. You know, I had a friend of mine got in a date and was talking to me and said, you know, we always sin a little bit every day. And that's a, there's a theology out there that you're always a sinner, you sin every day. And I said, really? Yeah, I said, well, what sin did you do today? He goes, I don't know, but I sinned today. Well, what was it? What did the Holy Spirit convict you of, and where were you in violation of the Word of God and commandments? He goes, well, I can't think of any. I said, do you ever think maybe you didn't? No, 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 we all sin every day. See, it's a theology. He's locked, locked into that. Then if he does sin, he has an excuse because we sin every day. He came to free you from your sin. I pray you have a clear conscience. I pray that you're sensitive enough to God that when you blow it, he, the Holy Spirit convicts you. And he goes, mm, 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 and, and right then you stop in your tracks, you turn it around, you make it right that you do that. Sing for joy to the Lord, O you righteous ones. Listen to this. Praise is becoming to the upright. I want you to ponder that. Praise is becoming to that right. Some of you are afraid to praise God because you want people to think you're a religious fanatic. No, if you're an upright person, people aren't going to think that. But if you live in sin or you're a hypocrite, they're going to think that. But if you're an upright person, they don't want to think that. It's becoming. I pray I live my life in such a manner that when I say praise the Lord to people, because I say that to everybody, I get it back 99% of the time. People who aren't even Christians say praise the Lord back. I have people that don't go to this church and don't necessarily go to any church. I tell them praise the Lord, give them a hug and a kiss, and they kiss me back and say praise the Lord. Why? It's becoming to the upright. And if you're living in an upright manner, it don't turn people off. It turns them on. I had, I had a, a man, a good friend of mine, uh, really loved the guy dearly. He said to me, you know, Pastor, I really want to be like you are. And he said, you can be. What stops you? you know, I want to say man up. 
live your life openly. What are, you, what are you hiding? We shouldn't be hiding anything. We should live our life openly before God. Listen to this. Because we deal with God. Oh, the kindness and severity of God. You do wrong. You sin. You willfully sin. God's going to discipline you. Especially because you're his and you name his name. He will deal with you. But his anger is for a moment. Excuse me. For his anger, for his anger is but for a moment. But his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night. But a, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. Do God's way. Do it God's way. Do God's will. And there will be a shout of joy in the morning. Your life will improve and get better. God will do that. Psalm 51, 8 says, Make me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. If you're willing to do God's will, one, you'll know if the teachings of God or not. But if you don't have a willing heart, you'll never understand that. So you have to have a willing heart, and that sustains you. But God will deal with you, and God will test you. And when that happens, don't let that freak you out. Just continue to do right. Continue to trust him and watch, watch what comes out of it. Good will always come out of it. You know, there's things wrong in your life that you're oblivious to. I'll give you an example. I think it's an easy example. Uh, you know, if you're a thief, it's pretty easy to repent over stealing, you know. If you, if you commit adultery, it's easy to understand that's wrong. But I've never seen anybody ever repent over being presumptuous. But people are very presumptuous. It, it's, a, uh, it's a manifestation of arrogance. You presume this, presume, you, you don't have things authorized, you just presume that it's okay. And we're presumptuous. So what I'm getting at, God will show you that that's wrong. God will show you your attitude. You know, it amazes me how many times you get counsel, you're talking to somebody, and there's a, there's a clash between two people, maybe a husband and wife, and the husband will go, all I said is I'm leaving. And you talk to the wife, and what did he say? He said, I'm out of here, and slammed the door when he walked out. Well, he didn't just say, all I said is I'm leaving, and walk out in the spirit of peace, and, you know, and vice versa. You know, you ladies can have a snarly attitude. You can... We can tell when you're not submissive. So can God. It saddens me today that we don't preach those things. It's the word of God. Do you know when you walk in salvation and you do everything God would have you to do, that you become a child of God and you're blessed and you're going to inherit eternal life and you're going to be glorified and you're going to put on immortality and live forever Perfect peace, perfect joy, no sickness, no death, no crying, no pain. No, That's what's coming for you. Jesus proved it. He rose from the dead. He sat at the right hand. That, I mean, what do you think you're after? And the devil lies to us so much. It's like, if you're going to be a Christian, you're going to be miserable, never have any fun. Wrong. I didn't have any life till I met Jesus. I had fun. You know, if you call going to a wedding reception and getting so stinking drunk when you come home you, or you spend the night by the toilet, and I mean throwing up and yelling for Ralph. Ralph! Boy, that was fun. Really had a good time the other night. I don't remember the other night. Well, they told me I had fun. Where do you think that world leads you to? But man, the joy of the Lord. We go have a dinner at our annual dinner up, up at Williams and have our annual dinner and sing some songs and praise God and have fellowship. All I come home, I'm flying. Man, this is awesome. This is good. Man, make me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones which thou hast broken rejoice. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. For that has been my help, and in the shadow of thy wings I sing for joy. My soul longed and even yearned for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. God is alive. We serve a living God. He rules and reigns in heaven. One of our founding fathers, I don't remember which one, said this, there is no king in America except Jesus. We have one king, and his name is Jesus. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to thee, and my soul which thou hast redeemed. But let all who take refuge in thee be glad. Let them ever sing for joy, and mayest thou shelter them, that those who love thy name may exalt thee. Now, pray while I'm reading this. You see, are you in there? Do your lips shout for joy? Do you sing praises? If the only time you sing Christian songs is here, and in your car, you know, 
It's not wrong to listen to country music or rock and all that stuff, but you, why are you lowering the standard of music? There is nothing with more life in it than gospel songs. Gospel songs are full of life and they touch your spirit and lift your soul. But some of the country songs, whoa, 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 be it unto me, man. My dog ran away with my, my wife died or ran off with the mailman. Jeez, like, oh, man, that, that's right there. All right. Thou will make known to me the path of life. In thy presence is what? Fullness of joy. In thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. God will bless you, church. You know, the pleasures forevermore, it's, he don't bring stuff down to you. He brings you up to that. Now, what am, what am I talking about? There was a time in my life if I wasn't riding a motorcycle or doing something as like I was miserable, you know, I had got to find something. Jeez, geez, this is boring. This is, now there's no such thing as boring. I mean, I can enjoy just sitting home. There's nothing on TV. Yeah, I know. I'm alive. I don't know if you're picking up what I'm telling. I still ride motorcycles. I still fly airplanes. I still do stuff. But if I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm like, oh, man, bummed out. Didn't, didn't, didn't do anything today. Yeah, I did. I breathed. You know, I'm Brother Buck at our age. You know, that's like from heaven. Things still work. You find out that you didn't even realize all your life that you're wonderfully and marvelously made, that the master engineer designed his body, that your fingers work. Everything, I mean, it's amazing what God did. He formed you in your mother's womb. Where do you think he came from? In Nehemiah, they're rebuilding the, the walls and the temple and all that's all going on. And they found the book and they're reading the book and the book of the law. And when they're reading the law, some of the people are weeping because they saw they had viola were violating the law. And he said to them, go eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions to those who have nothing prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's today for us. For, for the believer who has the Holy Spirit, that's every day. Every day. Don't be grieved. The joy of the Lord is your strength. What, what joy? Some things going wrong in my life. I know it's going to be all right. I just need to do what's right. He works all things for good. For those that love him and called according to his purpose. Now bless the Lord. Now I pray when you hear, hear, hear this. i give you this example. In fact, I've challenged him in a few times. The Lord says, I'll praise the Lord. With, the word says, I'll praise the Lord with a shout. And there's some of you guys, you, you're just not going to shout because it's not dignified. I'm not a radical Pentecostal. I don't do that. Well, then what are you? You violate the word of God. Little leaven's a, little, a whole lump. Leaven's a whole lump. Is that a little leaven? Of course, some of you have never rose to that yet. What part of the word can we just scratch off and say, that doesn't matter, that doesn't matter? And we do that. The devil, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll sit down and have a theological talk with you and show you how that doesn't apply for today. That was written 2,000 years ago, you know. You know, in Corinth, you know, they, they dress funny. And so in America, we don't dress funny. And if you don't, who will? I believe with all my heart, soul, mind, might, and strength that this is not an optional book. And God will show you and open your eyes to see everything you need to know to enhance your life that he might be glorified in it and that you get to participate in that joy, but that he'll be glorified in it. So, and, and hear this, all you can do is your part. Again, I can tell you all this stuff. I can tell you, you need to shout to the Lord. I can't make you shout, but I, I have to shout. You know, I can raise up, lift up holy hands. I can tell you that's what you should do, but you can still sit there like this. I might come and even ask you, is everything okay? And I'll put you on the spot. He's, he's interfering. 
It's my job to challenge the church, and it's my job to challenge me. And I want to do that 24-7 because we've been very blessed. So anyhow, I'm going to end with this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace 24-7. Amen, amen, amen. Love you all. Praise the Lord. Honor the word of God. Honor the Lord and watch what he does for you. Praise band, please come.